Hi, this is the Chemistry for Biology channel. I'm John Irwin. Our topic today is Metabolite Docking Part 2. So this is the second in a three-part series about metabolite docking. And uh, this work comes to you from the University of Toronto Faculty of Pharmacy, the Brian Scheuchert Lab, and uh, you can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and all that stuff. The work is funded by the NIH via a grant to John Geralt and the Enzyme Function Initiative. So our topic today is uh, metabolite docking. And as I said, this is the, th the second of a three-part series. So in part one, we set up a docking project. So we started docking, setting up grids and spheres and, and hot spots in the binding site, uh, getting ready for database screening. In this part two, uh, we're going to run a, a metabolite docking screen and we're going to just look a little bit at what happened in part one. And then in part three, we'll analyze the results of this database screen in more detail. Okay. So, um, and then in, in a little bit more detail, what we're going to do here is we're going to review the preliminary docking results to verify that docking is working or at least generating plausible looking results that uh, that makes some sort of sense to us and um, we're going to start a, da a ground state database screen recall that there's two different kinds of metabolite docking databases there's ground state and then there's high energy intermediates well there's a third kind too there's covalent metabolite databases that's not included in, in this series and then we're going to also start a high energy intermediate database docking screen and then we'll review these results uh, in part three Okay, so metabolite.docking.org is our website. We're going to go straight there, and I'll show you how it works. So earlier on, so this is metabolite.docking.org, and we saw this in the first part, and um, we're going to click on Query a Job, and under Query a Job, we're going to type in our number 70788 that we um, cr created in the first uh, video. That was 2OGJ, which was this uh, protein that was uh, that had previously been erroneously characterized in the literature, and there was a paper to go with it. Um, so when we say query job here, uh, this is now calibration done. So that's the end of the calibration phase of the docking. When I say calibration, it it has varying meanings depending on what information you've provided it with. So that's the whole page right there. Let me just go through it very quickly. So um, ever since about 2009, we've had the pocket picker built in, into um, uh, Doc Blaster, and the way it works is that it picks pockets. So each of these things here is a is a picked pocket. Nothing to do with docking, but if you don't like the docking that you're doing, um, or if you think you should be working on another site, you can work on one of these. So for instance, if I were to just click on this button here, it downloads a script. And then it, th this varies depending on how your, um, your browser has been set up. But in many cases, clicking on the script will launch Chimera. Now you need to have Chimera installed. Fortunately, it's free from UCSF. And so when Chimera starts up, uh, it looks like this. And remember here, this is the results of po picking pockets. Okay, results of picking pockets. So takes a little bit of time. We're downloading it over, I don't know, wireless. And uh, it'll, it, what it's going to do is you're going to see the binding site drawn with uh, purple spheres indicating the uh, binding site. And if we then, if we like this binding site, there. Okay, so, so the program has automatically colored in purple or magenta uh, spheres, atoms, that border a binding site. Now this is not the same binding site with the zincs in it that we used for metabolite docking. So anyway, I, I, you saw those buttons. I just wanted to explain what they were. So if you wanted to dock to this binding site, you could simply click on this button 2.0 and it would launch a docking job. But that's not what we're going to do. We're not doing the po picked pockets. Instead, we're going to look at the results of calibration docking. And so um, we have the program automatically uses two different uh, sampling schemes and two different scoring schemes. So faster and slower sampling and scoring number one and scoring number two. Okay, And so this gives you four shots on goal, four chances of um, 
getting results that, that make some sort of sense to you. So we're going to look at the first one there, and it's just taken a, se a set of molecules and it's just docked them into the binding site. It gives you some idea of what happened and what the what the do what you can expect from the docking when you dock against a larger library. So the idea is here, you're sort of de-risking large calculations by testing a small number of molecules, seeing if they make sense before you go and spend a time docking a large library. So here we've got some drugs, and uh, you can see the top scoring molecule, there's its ID, their zinc ID, uh, it gets a score in kcals per mole, there's a bunch of buttons here, a bunch of companies that sell it, and so on, a bunch of uh, properties of the molecules. Okay, and so then as you go down there you can see these molecules are all drugs. Many of them are commercially available. Okay, fine. And if you wanted to look and see what they looked like, you could click on Chimera. We like Chimera, so we're going to click on that button there. And then while we're going to wait for that, I'll also point out that uh, we also have PyMol available, so you could click on that button, and if you've got PyMol installed, it will automatically invoke PyMol. And I'll just show you that in, in just a moment. So what we're doing now is we're looking at some preliminary docking data to establish, does the docking model dock molecules into the binding site in the kind of way that we are hoping that it would. Okay. So uh, this is now loading up all these molecules at once. So here are the, uh, the, um, the zinc IDs. Okay. So that's the view dock tool. And now if we show the energies, you'll find that those correspond exactly to that uh, listing we had before. Now, something funny is going on because there's the molecule there. So there's our zincs in the binding site in behind there, and here's our drug, okay? And if you like, you can calculate hydrogen bonds automatically. Okay, this is all standard Chimera stuff. And it's going to take a little bit of time to calculate the, um, the Chimera, to, to calculate the, uh, the hydrogen bonds. Okay, polar interactions. So while that's happening, we'll just just sort of adjust a little bit around here. Okay, just off to the side there. And um, the reason I recommend calculating hydrogen bonds is it sort of draws these little lines that indicate polar interactions. So for instance, looking around behind here, there's a uh, OH of a serine that's talking to uh, uh, tertiary amine here, and there's a carbonyl of this molecule that's talking to, uh, it looks like a backbone nitrogen here of a glycine. So, you know, does it make sensible interactions? And, and, uh, okay, and so now if you, you can scroll through these molecules and you can see a bunch of them, and if you select them all at once, you can get a sort of sense of how they fill the binding site, and in this case, the molecules are sampling the binding site pretty well. Now if you, so we're going to close Chimera, return to our chart, and going arrow back, that was just the extrema, well, these are just molecules um, for sampling the binding site with this. So the faster scoring number one produced some sensible looking results. Okay, if we click on this one, you'll notice that there's different molecules, different scoring scheme, different sampling, slightly different molecules, slightly different scores. I think this was the top scoring molecule in the previous one, and now this one is up here now. Okay, so that sort of little changes. If you pick on random, slower scoring, okay, you basically have eight shots on, or four shots on goal, four different sets of things to look at. So here are some very different molecules based on a different, different amount of sampling, different amount of scoring, different kinds of molecules. And so one of these may work better for you than others. Also, the reason why those molecules were different was it was a different data set, the extrema and the random data sets, which, by the way, I think are all drugs. All right, so um, imagine you want to dock. You're going to pick either high-energy intermediates or ground states. So let's pick ground state to start with. And now from ground state, you can pick from among some databases here. We have documentation on our website, about on our wiki, about all the different metabolite databases. But briefly, human metabolome, 
um, metabolites from, from different sources. Okay, so HMDB, and then um, we're going to click on DOC, and faster scoring number one. So it's a little bit wordy here, but a docking job has been queued on your behalf. And so now when we go back and reload the page, Okay, there's our job, 70788, and now we've got docking queued is our status. It's only been running for 11 seconds, so we should give it a little bit of time, but there's nothing to look at yet. Okay, so we'll come back to that in a few minutes, in part three. In the meantime, I prepared another docking job, and that allows us, this is exactly the same, 2OGJ, as the first one I just showed you, but this allows us to dock a high energy intermediates job, so this time, as you can see, there are a number of libraries here, and these are documented in the wiki page about Metabolites databases. So each of these databases has a little bit of an explanation about what it is. It was generated as part of a project. And so we're going to dock the five-membered ring acid sugars uh, as a high-energy intermediate library. So these have already undergone the first step of catalysis, the nucleophilic attack of a hydroxide anion. Okay. And so we are going to now click on dock. Okay, it's really kind of simple. Queuing, queuing docking calculation, a docking job has been queued on your behalf. So 70783. So and when we go back and we reload the page, you can now see that, that the job has been queued and it's been running for a few seconds. Okay, it's been running for 11 seconds. Five-membered acid sugars, job running. So we're going to come back in about an hour, okay, about an hour, and look and see what happened uh, to our calculation. So, um, metabolite docking is available. It's available f to use on our website, or you can download the software and run it on your own computers. Um, there are two kinds of libraries for docking. There are ground state metabolites and there are high energy intermediates that have undergone the first step of catalysis, nucleophilic attack of hydroxide. There's other, there's other reactions, so those are documented in the wiki page. Um, we also offer covalent docking and regular docking, uh, including covalent docking of metabolites uh, of phosphates. Uh, that was used for one of our projects in one of our papers. And uh, this service is free to use. I'm not going to pretend that it's not tricky to use. It's, there's numerous pitfalls, starting with the structure of the PDB file. Um, and so I'm not trying to pretend that this program is going to work for you beautifully like Microsoft Word every single time you run it. You do need to uh, roll your sleeves up a little bit and, and uh, get involved in the calculation. But it's available and it's free. And sample data are available on our website as I showed you last time. And if nothing else, you can recapitulate the calculations I'm showing you in this video. And that's the end of Metabolite Docking Part 2. Join us again for Metabolite Docking Part 3 and other exciting videos on docking.org and on um, Chemistry for Biology channel on YouTube. Thanks for your attention.